morning, everybody, and welcome back to Cornell and Johnson. My name is Lori Cedric, and I'm Director of Career Management, um, and I'm very excited to introduce my colleague, Lynn Allen, who does and focuses on career advising for alumni. So um, one of the things that you all should know is that as a Johnson alum, you have career advice and resources, access to career advice and resources through your lifetime. So on, um, and we think that that's pretty great. And on the Johnson homepage, if you click on the alumni link, and then there's a link for career services, and then that's how you access all of the resources that are available to you, including how to sign up for a one-on-one -on -one coaching session with either me or Lena. Um, we're thrilled to offer you this particular session. Um, as you know, LinkedIn, and you have probably all figured out, LinkedIn is pretty darn important these days. And um, I think we're all gonna learn something that included. And um, I'd like Lynn to introduce Sandra. We're thrilled to have Sandra here um, to do the session. So, um, welcome everybody, and I'm so happy to see you. I, I want to just throw in right now that I am here to do some career coaching and this kind of a workshop, uh, which we're so happy to have a speaker here who's really dynamic and interesting in a topic that I think all of you obviously are interested in. Sandra Long is um, a specialist in social media consulting to businesses and job seekers. Um, this is, she's based in Connecticut, but works with, I'm sure, anybody that is interested in having an appointment with her or has a business that could use some social media advising. Um, and she also um, has a long career in business development and sales and probably one of the premier business development, I'm sorry, business to business companies, which was Pitney Bowes. Um, and has a dynamic background in sales and business development. And I think she saw the social media importance and really moved into that field. So we're delighted to have Sandra here. Um, she will take questions, but um, welcome. Thank you. Well, it is absolutely a pleasure to be here at Cornell University. Beautiful campus, beautiful school, wonderful. And I, I have to say how impressive it is that you have all this career, the career resources. A lot of universities don't offer that. I've had new grads come to me for help with their social media or trying for, for job purposes. And I always, for the first thing I always say to them, and this was a gentleman recently who was a year out of college, I said, go to your college first, see what the resources are from your school before you spend any money with outside people. And he was immediately came back and said, I can't, I can't get any more help from my college. So really it's a wonderful thing. You have incredible resources here at Cornell. And I'm just, Please be on belief to be here and, and work with you. So the topic today is LinkedIn and personal branding. It's my favorite topic. And what you're gonna learn, it's not really just about the profile. You're gonna learn really my philosophy and different. there's different philosophies of how you can work and use LinkedIn to help create and manage your personal brand. And you'll get a sense of that as we go through this morning. And we'll have questions at the end. And what I will be doing is I'll be sharing with you some stories of some real people, because I think it brings it, rather than just being theory, uh, I'll share with you some real people, some real stories. I'll show you some screenshots so you can see what people have done that's really worked and been effective. Come on in. So the first story I'm gonna share with you is a story of referral. So this was a gentleman in Connecticut who's an attorney who came to me because he was trying to grow his business. And with attorneys, there's a lot of competition. Just like with job seekers, there's a lot of competition. And many of, many of us have competition in our businesses. And he was hoping to get referred, and he found an incredible source. His name is Albert. And he came to me and he said, I've got a woman who's gonna refer me to all this business, but she won't do it because of my LinkedIn profile. She's embarrassed to introduce me to someone because they're gonna look immediately at the profile. So that was kind of a powerful statement that I got from this attorney, which I don't think I would have happened several years ago. When I graduated from college, which was in 1979, we didn't use the word personal branding. We used the words uh, reputation. That's what mattered. You made sure you had a great reputation, right? That you had a reputation for being whatever it was. You know, I, for me, I wanted to be the most productive, the most professional, hardworking. I wanted that kind of reputation. And now, people talk about personal branding, what's really amplified it is social media. And particularly, LinkedIn is the best way from a professional perspective to create your personal brand. 
This is the this chart shows Google search volume of LinkedIn, and it's pretty amazing, right? So they started actually they opened up in 2003 as a startup out in Mountain View, California, and the blue line shows I was fortunate and lucky that I joined in 2005. You can see the blue line started to go up in 2007, and if I thought about Albert, I don't think he would have come to me five years ago and said that I can't get referred. But you can see now why he's why Albert's coming to me in 2015 and saying I need to help have help with my brand, right? So there's 347 million users, and the the growth rate is so incredible. It's two new members per second. One of the things that I was very excited about was in 2013, this Fortune article came out, and it was about LinkedIn. And why was I excited? I'll tell you, it was really, if you see, um, it says everything you need to know about LinkedIn, what it can do for your career was the top bullet. But I was excited about the third bullet, because what it says is, and how it's changing business. So there's a lot of people out there, they know that many people still think that it's, it's a place to get a job, and it is, and it's a place to recruit a candidate. And it is, but Fortune put this out, how it's changing business. So LinkedIn is changing the way people fundamentally do business, right? So it's changing the way they sell, it's changing the way they buy, how they recruit, how they do job search. It's changing the way people get their news. How many people are getting their news from LinkedIn? Great, okay. So that's what's happening. People are getting their news and people are creating news. Who's creating news? You're, you're sharing a lot, right? So that's, that's really the forefront of what's happening. It's gonna accelerate. So the whole point on personal branding is taking charge of it and creating your, what you put online, it really becomes what, how you're known. I mean, you create that. So if there's something that you're good at, and it's some, some kind of um, opportunity that you're seeking, it's, it's, you form that and you put that online and, and you make that happen. It's so important. So I have three main points about creating personal brand, and we're gonna go into these. The first one is to be found. So these are the three pieces, and I have them on your screen. <coughs> it's all about being found. Many times, like Albert, he couldn't be found, and then when he was found, he wasn't happy with what they saw, right? So you wanna be found. The second one is to be memorable. And this is really un unbelievably easy to do, because many people are on LinkedIn and they don't know how to operate. They don't know how to engage. So if you are really good at how you engage on LinkedIn, you can, make, you can make yourself be very memorable to your prospects, whether it's a business prospect or whether it's a job prospect. And the third one is to be a trusted expert. So these are the three pieces we're gonna go through. So the first one is being found. Well, welcome, come on in. When people are looking for people, they go to either Google or LinkedIn. Do you guys find that's where you're going? Yes, all right, Google or LinkedIn. And the funny thing is, if you go to Google, what happens? It takes you to LinkedIn <laughs> if you Google someone, right? So, so people that aren't on LinkedIn are missing out, in, in, they're, they're missing out on being found on Google when you think about it, right? So that's a huge thing. Google makes the decisions, you know, as we all know, they decide what's gonna rank on a website. So whatever, whatever search term is put in. And LinkedIn is highly favored by Google. So that means that if, your name, if you put your name, and I recommend you all do this every so often, just Google your name. So in my case, I've got a very common name. Wow, you put in Sandra Long, it says Sandra Long Profile. That's not even necessarily me, right? So I wanna make sure when the person Googles my name, they get to LinkedIn, and then they're gonna get to me first. Oh, there's hundreds of people with my name. And there's ways you can do that. And that's by optimizing your profile, having, and I'll show you exactly what the key pieces are, so that you, when someone's looking for you, you wanna be found, all right. So the first thing is to have a 100% complete profile. So when LinkedIn is deciding what, what Sandra Long to show first or what Lori Sedgwick to show first, they're good, what, that's one of the factors is having a complete profile. You also want to have, so in addition to search friendly, and there's some people that will teach only about the search. There are people that could come in here and talk to you only about search. And I feel that that's a, there's missing missing component, that you really need to also be customer friendly, what that means is if they get to your profile, that they're engaged enough that they want to call you, right? That they're interested in you, that they're compelled to call you. So that's called being customer friendly. So one of the things about the branding is the words. The words you use throughout your profile will cause people to find you and cause people to understand. I'll show you some real examples in a minute. 
but the words are very important and you can use them throughout your profile. So here's an example right here. And this gentleman is one of my clients. Uh, his name is Felix Giannani and he owns a business in Connecticut. He has Connecticut and New York customers, uh, Lexco Security. And he is an absolute expert in everything security. Even though what his business does is they do alarms and whatnot, he has such deep expertise, it's unbelievable. So it was a lot of fun doing his profile with him. And the, the, the key word he has is security. So if you use the word security, you can see how he's using that word. But it's very important to have it be really authentic and natural and not sound like you're just stuffing a lot of words, right? You want it to be very compelling and interesting. So that's just an example of, of a keyword. Customer friendly language. What that means is, I, I think it means using first person, not third person. And I think that also it means giving your phone number and your email or whatever way you want to be contacted, being very clear about that and being open. You know, you, there's a lot of opportunities to say, I'm looking forward to working with you, all that kind of messaging. This is one of the most exciting things about LinkedIn. It's pretty new. The couple of, last couple of years is you can be very visual. So uh, what, there's so many opportunities. And if you probably, some of you have probably noticed how much it's changed. And they keep changing LinkedIn. LinkedIn is changing on a continual basis. So the first way is a headshot. Now these people are very attractive young people, right? They probably look like fun. You can have a beer with them. They're nice people, but they're not a headshot. So it's really important to invest and have a professional headshot. People make judgments. I mean, I'm sorry to tell you, but they do. Whether they're going to connect with you, whether you're going to join a group. Sometimes group managers will not accept someone who doesn't have a photo. So if you're, if you're operating without a photo, it's, it hurts you, is all I'm saying. So get, get a great photo. And when you think about it, when you love your photo and you love your page, you're going to be more active and more interested. And you're not going to feel as shy about connecting. You're going to feel good about it. So this, is ha this happened in 2014, the background photos. Do you all remember that? Have you seen that? Some of you have them? Yes? Yes, perfect. All right, so this is really exciting. They opened this up April of 2014. And this was started with premium members, and now they're rolling it out to everybody. And I'm gonna show you some really great examples. So Lisa is up in Hartford, she works at Cigna. And so what I want you to see here, here is her nice headshot her headline, which she happens to decide to include her company. And she's got the background image, which is um, of Hartford. She wanted a corporate-like image for the background picture. So Felix, which you just saw, he wanted to be able to show the types of clients that he works with. So he does corporate, you know, commercial clients, as well as residential clients. So he shows both in his profile. So here's Mary Beth. So she's a consultant, so we made a word cloud for her. And really was able to show the kind of things that she teaches about um, leadership, motivation, those kind of things. And we were able to take the words and really effectively, you kind of get a feel for her just by looking at that background photo. And here's Albert. We talked about Albert. So Albert was originally listing himself from his title, um, was really his company name. And that didn't really help him be found, right? So we, we made sure that we used the word attorney. So we have attorney in there. And we also put in other keywords that are important. So he does real estate. We listed his states. What was interesting, he had a new headshot. And he has a custom background. So he does commercial, uh, commercial and residential real estate attorney in Connecticut and New York. So you can see that New York and Connecticut map right here where he works. He's got a word cloud with his words. He has um, a flag from the Fairfield Beach. He's from Fairfield and he's a veteran. So that was a very custom-made um, heading, you know, head, head background for him to show his brand. So he's going to get referred now, don't you think? Mm -hmm. <laughs> now this gentleman, I love this story. I work with a lot of veterans in, especially in November, I do a special program for veterans and do some free workshops with them. And he came to me last November, and he had um, been in the service, and I wanted to make sure for his headline that we put a military veteran in there. And we all, he just got certified from Southern Connecticut State University as a teacher. And so we put the te that he was certified as a teacher. And you can see he wants to be an English teacher. What does he have back there? Yeah. Catch, catcher in the Rye, Grapes of Wrath. It gives you the image, right? It gives you the image. So think about yourself. What do you have for your photos in your LinkedIn profile? What are the words you have? What are the visuals you have? What are you creating for the people that come to your page? Right, it's up to you. 
Now, on top of all that great stuff with, with photos and visuals, uh, we can add rich media and links. Lots of opportunity here. I'm going to show you a couple examples. So I have some clients that are connecting their YouTube. If, you are, if you've been interviewed on YouTube, it doesn't matter whether it's your channel or someone else's. You should definitely, if it's a professional um, interview that you've done, maybe you were interviewed for, for whatever, a television program, or maybe it was a local program, you should hook that and connect that right into your LinkedIn profile. So when people come to your page, they'll see your interview. Um, I work with a lot of authors. We have a lot of authors in Connecticut. So I make sure to connect to their Amazon page and they, so people can come to their page, they can read a great profile, and they can connect right through to buy their book. And I have another client who is a retail store, and they have um, an eBay store. So we connected all their employees, their entire employee base, to their eBay store. So they have a nice profile, very customer friendly, and then selling, they can sell right from there. So one of the other things that happened in the last couple of years is there's new sections on LinkedIn. So it used to be the standard sections, and there's a lot of new sections that you can take advantage of. So when you think about your industry, some of them are very important. So one of them is certifications. If you're in the finance industry, this is where you're going to put your Series 7 and your Series 63, that type of thing. If you're in the project management industry, this is where you put your PMI certificate, right? Um, so if you're a writer, there's a publication section. You can connect to your blog post. That's perfectly, is perfect. Organizations are fantastic too. Whatever professional organization that you belong to, you should call those out separately. And I imagine, um, since we're up at Cornell, maybe some of you are, have also engineering backgrounds, and you might have a patent. So you can list your patents very cleanly, clearly, onto your LinkedIn profile. So all these sections are fairly, they've been out about three years. So if you haven't upgraded your profile in four or five years, take a look. I call it a strategic upgrade. Many, many people I, I work with need a strategic upgrade to their profile. So take a look at that. Now, the LinkedIn summary, what an opportunity. This is 2,000 characters of your amazing opportunity to really make yourself special. And in this case, I don't recommend that you repeat everything you've already said. Don't say, well, I went to Cornell, and I, I work here, and I'm an attorney there. You don't, Because they already can see that. But what is it that you can make it so special and so compelling about you? What, what, you know, why should, you know, what problems do you solve? You know, how did you get here? How does, sometimes people have a, a very a scattered profile. They've done various different things. And if you just come to the profile without a summary, you, you really can't make sense of it. But think about this opportunity to bring that story together and where you are, right? It's just phenomenal. So that's something that I see a lot of people don't utilize properly. And then recommendations and endorsements. Those are very important. Sometimes people minimize them, but it's important to have a strategy for both recommendations and endorsements. It will really help you. And then, of course, the companies that you follow and the groups that you belong to, all are going to be potentially on your profile, and it really plays to your brand. That's all something just to be aware of. And what's interesting, this is, these are LinkedIn statistics, not my statistics. So if you have a um, photo, you're 14 times likely more to be viewed. And if you're on LinkedIn, you want to be viewed. The whole point is people are looking at your profile, that means they're interested in you. If you go for an interview or if you go for a sales call, and if they're looking at your profile, that means you're doing pretty well. That means they're, they're interested, they're at least interested in you. If, uh, conversely, if you go to an interview or a sales call and you know these people are on LinkedIn and they're not looking at you, you probably have a problem. But it's good to know, right? It's good to be able to be proactive. So 14 times likely, 13 times by listing your skills. So if you're not listing your skills, now I realize some of you who are in the finance industry are restricted. I'm, I'm sorry that, that's, but that you're following the regulations that, you, that some of you have to follow. But otherwise, if you're not in the finance industry, most of the industries you want to list your skills. And, and then adding your most recent, two most recent positions. So that, those are stats right from LinkedIn. So that was being found. Being found is so important. Now the next part is surprisingly easy. Being found takes a lot of work, by the way. I mean, I'm, I'm not going to be, i got to be honest, it takes the work to think about it. What do you want to, how do you want to present yourself? But being memorable is just being smart, and, and it's not that hard, because so many people are, have a tough time being memorable. So what does that mean? Well, I might surprise you by telling you 
that on LinkedIn, I don't, as a social media person, I don't say to people, that's how you should operate and not be face to face. Face to face is the most important thing you can do. Having a good face to face meeting, having a good relationship, going to dinner, going to lunch, having coffee, that's the most important thing. But what this is for is to enhance your relationships, deepen them, uh, help you do a better job, have a better interview, better sales call because you're using it properly, you're following up and you're getting information in advance, you're doing it better. It doesn't replace face to face. So the first thing about being memorable is truly investing in your network. And when I think about it, a lot of times people kind of just, they're sort of accidental networkers, they kind of just fall into it. But if you really plan it and think about who do you know and where are you trying to go with your career or your business, and then who do you need to know to make that happen? You can be strategic about planning your network. And I really encourage that. And the best way to build a network is to bring value first, right? So we do that by being helpful. All the things you can do by bring, being, being valuable to other people, and then that comes around for them to be value, helpful to you. So the most valuable thing that most people like is introductions. If you're able to make strategic, can you imagine this, of making strategic introductions for your network, what does that do? It, it, it opens up so many things. They will start, people will start introducing you. It's, ju it's a chain reaction. So that's the first piece. So if you're going to be bringing value and doing all this helpfulness to other people, think about it. Are you in the right room? If you're in the right room, and look at you folks. You're all here. You all came to this core now. You came to the reunion. You're in the right room. Aren't you? You came here with all these incredible people that are from your school. So you put yourself in the right room. So what that means is that this is the right place to be. To, 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 and, and you think about that every day. And I worry about that myself. Sometimes I do a lot of various uh, activities. And I always have to say, am I in the right room? Am I prioritizing where I'm spending my time? But you folks are definitely here. And uh, so this is a great strategic network place for you to be. And then, of course, committing to your network. Being memorable. So this is the part of being memorable. One of the major things you can do, and it's so easy, is to personalize everything that you do on LinkedIn. So rather than being, and you might have seen people, sometimes people just operate where they just send things out, they invite people, they connect. There's nothing personal. By making it personal, you will stand out amongst everyone in your network, just very clearly. So the first thing is to be memorable with email. And I like to say, you want to be the green fish. You don't want to be, everyone else is the orange fish. If you can be the green fish, they will remember you. And that means when you send an email, make sure it's personal. How do you do that? Well, the first thing I do if I'm going to be sending a message to someone, I'm going to look at their profile. And I'm going to talk about something that's important to them, not what's important to me. And you can easily do that. So be helpful and be personal on your emails. And what's great is your first level connections you can do that private messaging, which is in mail. You might not have their email. You might have met them five years ago, and they've now changed jobs. But the good news from LinkedIn is you can do a private message to all your personal connections. So you can do that in a personal way. The next thing is invitations, personalizing your invitations. So here's an example. Now, I was a speaker last summer in Stanford, and I have to tell you, I really did not remember this guy. We, uh, I was, it was social media day at, at the Stanford Innovation Center, and he sent me this note before I was speaking. And if you can see here, we have 39 shared connections, so I'd probably, I would definitely check him out anyway. I'd be interested, well, how do, how do we have 39 connections? And I realized we, we, he works at Pitney Bowes, because I'm always looking, what is the connection before I decide? But he wrote this message about kind of telling me we kind of crossed paths, where he's been working, He's coming to hear me speak, I, so I was, this was personal to me, this, this made me feel good and I connected with him, right? So it's a great example, you don't have, you can use it in a lot of ways, but you wanna be personal. There's also a feature, this came out in about 2013 called LinkedIn Venture. So if you want to highlight someone that uh, maybe has had a great accomplishment, you can use a LinkedIn mention basically in the status update, you're mentioning their name and it gives you an opportunity to have a great uh, you know, shout out to that person. 
Now my favorite is follow-ups because I can't tell you how many lost sales, lost jobs mm -hmm. are because of follow-up all the time. So we're going to talk about follow-up. And it's the number one reason for networking success. And uh, this just came out, actually, um, the Bureau of Labor Statistics came out with it. 70% of jobs are from networking. Um, so it's, it's a huge, huge piece. And of course, there's traditional follow-up. I love all this traditional follow-up. I'm not saying not to do any of this. I love it all. It's very important and it helps you be memorable. By following up makes you, because most people don't follow up. It almost seems simple when the career person tells you you need to follow up and you think, well, everybody's following up. They're not. They're not following up, right? Right. So when you follow up, you are so special. And I, I believe this. I believe that as a job seeker or a salesperson, which we're all the same and we all should be both, you go in and make that, that have that meeting, and you leave. You might have had you might have had four competitors at that meeting. You know, maybe they rotated people in. Two weeks later, and maybe you were number three or number two after that meeting. Two weeks later, you can move yourself up to number one by best by the best follow up. You can change where you stand. You can change a meeting meeting outcome by having great follow up. So of course, there's a lot of other new ways to do it. I'm going to share with you some of my favorite ways on LinkedIn. So after you have. You know, because you can use LinkedIn to have some variety. What I like is variety. You know, not just asking people, uh, sending an email all the time. Have you made a decision? Have you made a decision? How many times can you say that? Right? So sometimes you want to touch them in other ways to remind them of you. So you can do all of these things. You can connect with them. You can endorse them. You can email them. You can mention them. You can do all these things. I have a person that I've been trying to work with for a long time, and I've I've asked him many times that he made a decision, and I can't keep doing that. It's a current situation I have right now. He's in the UK. So I, what I do is every couple of weeks, and it's just taking them a long time, it's a large corporation, I figure ways to touch him through LinkedIn. I like some of his content, or some, I share something that he posted, and every time I do it, he sends me a note. So I'm not even asking him, like, what's up? I'm not saying, have you decided? Are you bringing me into your company? I, haven't, I don't have to do that. He'll see that I've shared his article or commented, and he sends me, oh, by the way, this is the update. It's an easy way to be authentic and to follow up without you know, constantly hitting somebody over the head. There's just so many options, but follow up is the key to success. So it's a way to be memorable. Another way to be memorable is to say thank you. People don't say thank you as much as they should. You could take that every Friday and say, who can I thank this week? Think about it. How will they, will they remember you? And they, they definitely will remember you. And it's people you can thank from long ago, people you can thank from this week, from today, whatever, who taught you something, who helped you, who introduced you. And, if, and certainly, all those interviews and meetings that you have, when you go back to thank that interviewer or that prospect, don't forget all the people that introduced you along the way. So you get that meeting, and you have that great meeting. Thank them, but thank those people. Because guess what? They'll be more invested in you to help connect you more the next time, right? So those are all ways. And of course, being memorable with uh, recommendations and endorsements. All these things help you be memorable. One of the ways I love to say is, if you're recommending other people, you're showing yourself as a leader. Now, I'm not, I know that we all want recommendations. We need to get them, yes. But, but giving them shows you as a, as a real leader. Right? Because you're, you know, you're leading teams, you're hiring people, you should be recommending people authentically. It really shows well. Okay, so being memorable, it, it sounds, you know, once you get into the groove of it, it's, 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 it's really just a habit of how you operate. And of course, making sure you know the etiquette. So really being careful about the etiquette. LinkedIn has very specific etiquette. The so number three, we talked about being found. We talked about being memorable. And now, who wants to be a trusted expert here at Cornell? You guys are all experts. You went to Cornell, Johnson School, right? Maybe you want to be trusted. Maybe that takes a little more work to put that online. Uh, so there's so many ways you can be a trusted expert using LinkedIn. I mean, some of it's on the profile, but there's more to it than that. And we've talked about some of that. Um, thought leader. This is what people are talking to me about now. I've got entrepreneurs coming to me, I've got attorneys, I've got consultants, I've got job seekers saying to me, I need to show my thought leadership. That's how I'm going to get hired. That's how I'm going to get the clients is showing my thought leadership. So 
So LinkedIn is a perfect way to do that. So you can share content, share compelling content. Obviously, that's a great way to show your thought leadership, right? And you can share videos, you can share other, whether you write the content or someone else writes the content. And I'm also gonna show you about LinkedIn publishing as well. Groups, groups is a great way too to show your industry expertise. And you know, you pick the right group, make sure you're strategic about the group, that it's you know, for your industry, and that you are offering, again, bringing value to your network, and then people will come and look at your profile. If you're bringing value, and I'll show you an example of how that's done, um, the story I have is a guy who is also in Connecticut, and he's a, he started his own business. He's a consultant in the auto industry. And he knew that it was a very specific target market. So we worked very hard to find him the right group. You need to find the right group, and you need to know the rules of the group if you're gonna be posting. Be careful. So he did, and he found this automotive group, and so his name is Bill, and he's there giving his advice. He's an expert in the auto industry. So he's giving advice within the group, and then people start to contact him to hire him. He doesn't go to the group and say, hire me, I know the, I know the most. He shares the knowledge as a thought leader within the group, and then he gets called. So here, Cornell University has a lot of groups. So that's one thing too. I mean, in, in, on top of your industry groups, you want to think about being in the Johnson group, being in the Cornell groups, wherever you went to undergrad. All those are part of your uh, networking and your opportunity to share your thought leadership, as well as your networking. So uh, if you blog and you blog on a, on a particular website, you can take that and share that. So here's an example of a blog post I wrote which this blog post is about networking with alumni. So I can just share that on my update and my, you know, my network will see that update, right? So that's a, that's a shared update. There's also a lot of uh, content you can find in the under Pulse, which is your channels. You can follow this and get content and find things to share within your industry. And how many people, is anyone here publishing on the LinkedIn publisher platform? Okay, not yet, well you will be. So this is pretty exciting. Has anyone noticed it? The blog, you guys have noticed it. Yes, all right. So it's coming your way. They opened this up in 2014 in March, only to a very small number of people. And they are rolling it out, basically to all English speaking people are gonna have this. So you will have it. If you don't have it now, you'll have the ability to have it. You'll get an invitation like this, right? Many of you probably have it and don't know it. And when you go into your platform, this is what it looks like. You'll see an ability to put a headline, you'll be able to add an image, and you can write a blog post. It's pretty easy. What I would say, if, it, if you've never blogged before, just be careful, make sure you're writing a thought leadership piece. Don't write an advertising piece. Because if you write an advertising piece, then people won't come back and look at your, your, your future blogs. Mm -hmm. What's really exciting, if, if LinkedIn picks up your post, it will put it on Pulse. Remember I showed you those categories? So, a couple of the posts that I've done, I usually write about networking, social media, or career, um, or LinkedIn. And a couple of my posts have been picked up through some of the channels. And instead of having 300 views, you get 3,000 views. So it, it can happen if you're writing about one of the channels. It's pretty exciting. So it also will show on your profile, will show your blog post right under uh, your headline right there. So you can see, so that's where you will have your blog post if you do decide to do that. It's a decision for those five of you or four of you that are already blogging, it's a decision you have to make. Do you want to you can keep blogging where you are or you can reconfigure your articles slightly and bring them over to LinkedIn as well. A lot of people are doing that because they get great exposure on LinkedIn.